Hmm. Hmm. All right, hello and welcome. My name is Matt Pomeroy, and I am part of the Phys Ed, Phys Ed Agogi team putting on the Phys Ed Summit 4.0. Um, just wanted to take this moment to welcome you, and we're just so happy that you could join us for this physical educational uh, professional development opportunity. Uh, we are again using TOSL to bring you the Phys Ed Summit. Um, so again, not only can you view this presentation, uh, but you can also find any presenter resources, uh, which uh, David has shared down below. So you can find that. It is a Dropbox link. Um, David also has, and Kelly also has, uh, a Google document where you can, uh, and they're hoping that we type in as many answers as we possibly can. So. Um, what I'm asking you now is to open up that Google document. Um, let's get on to that so people can, again, continue to add to that. And we can learn a whole lot more um, by crowdsourcing some of that material. So, um, and then again, on that TOSL, you can participate in a real uh, like basically a real time conversation about the session. So, I'm going to be moderating that back channel on TOSL, that chat. So, if you have questions for um, either of our presenters, um, I can go ahead and answer them for you. So, and in case of any technical difficulties with the video feed, we will also post a new link in that TOSL. So, with that being said, we are ready for, this is part two, game modification for learning tactical concepts in invasion games. All right, we have two presenters with us today, um, and I'm excited to welcome them in here. But David Gutierrez is an associate professor at the Faculty of Education. Um, in Ciudad Real, um, which is which is in Spain, and he has expertise in sport pedagogy and games teaching. He studied at the National Institute of Physical Education in Maine from 92 to 97 and received his PhD from the University of, oh, this one could be a tricky one for me. <laughs> Castillo. No, Castillo. No yeah, thank you for your help. <laughs> I'll help you with any English that you need. <laughs> so. And again, his PhD was focused on the development of ta uh, the tactical knowledge in school-aged children. So um, he's taught some physical education at secondary school and university levels since 1998. So um, that being said, we welcome David. And Kellyanne Perry is also here with us. Um, and Kellyanne is currently completing her PhD in education research focused on game-centered approaches and teacher professional learning. Specifically, a research looks at bridging the gap between theory and practice, which is an excellent thing to do, and looks at how to support uh, those teachers to implement game-centered practice uh, within their own context. Um, so Kelly is an experienced PDHP teacher teaching in both the UK and Australia, uh, where she has embedded game-centered approaches in her teaching practice. Um, and Kel Kelly is lecturing right now. Um, in a casual capacity at the University of uh, Wollong. And Kelly has been a member of the TGFUSIG executive since 2013. And she takes the role of communications director. All right. Um, and this presentation is delivered as part of the TGFUSIG executive professional development initiative. And really excited to have uh, you both with us. Um, you know, I'm kind of in the implement implementation stages of TGFU in my classroom, and I'm really excited to learn some more. So uh, thanks for joining us. Why don't you guys both say hi, and then we can kick this thing off. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you very much, Matt, uh, for this presentation. I'm very glad to be here. And as I told you before, it's, we are doing a very, very good job uh, to, to keep the teachers updated. And we are very happy from the TGFU SIG to, to share with you uh, as much as we know. So thank you very much. So uh, yeah, I'll just say a quick hello. I'm um, just I'm jumping in here um, with David. David is Spanish and delivering this in English, so a massive um, heads up for David. Um, and I'll just be jumping in with my experiences as well. Um, just having read David's presentation, I've learned so so much already. So I'm sure you guys will will all enjoy. So yeah, over to you, David. Okay, thank you very much. You think uh, it's okay? We will begin with this. So. Yep. Uh, you uh, probably most of you are um, familiar with the TGFU uh, concepts. I will try to, to explain them and, 
specifically to uh, invasion games. Um, my, the focus of my presentation will be the tactical concepts um, related with the pedagogical principles, uh, which are four, sampling, representation, exaggeration, and tactical complexity. I will go into deep to the four of them, but uh, firstly we will do a very quickly uh, view. Sampling is to use different game samples uh, within the same um, category. Representation is to simplify the game so the students can actually play. Exaggeration is when we modify the game so we can address an, a specific tactical problem so the student can face that problem and practice. And tactical complexity is just to put uh, the less complex games at the beginning in the progression of your P curriculum. So it really is common sense. It's a really uh, nice pedagogy and very, very simple common sense, nine common sense. Uh, so let's try to, to explain it um, basically, because it's really basic, uh, but it's really good. So firstly, we are trying to explain about invasion game, but what is the aim of an invasion game and what types of invasion game are there? Not everybody uses the same uh, classification of sports and games. Uh, this classification has been um, explained by Kelly before in the presentation before. You can, you can watch it for further explanation. So, but uh, let's try to do an activity. Let's, uh, Let's watch. Uh, well, let's let's see what's the aim. Let's and we will see later in video to try to define the uh, these uh, characteristics. So invasion games are uh, that those games that uh, the main purpose is to invade the opponent's territory while scoring points and keeping your uh, your team's point to the minimum. So like football or handball team or water polo or hockey. You have to go to the other side where uh, the opponents are waiting for you, trying to prevent you for scoring. It's okay. And what kind or what types of invasion games are there? For example, those that you have to, to cross a line, like rugby or American football, you have to throw or shot into a target or hoop, like basketball. And um, what skill do you use? You have to you can find sports like hockey uh, in which you're using a stick or you can play with your, your foot like in soccer. Uh, where is the just, video? I'm, I'm just going to jump in there, David. Just a um, very interesting conversation in the presentation before is that um, uh, we were saying that a lot of our phys ed curriculums are dominated with invasion games, we, we use um, them from year seven or even from, from kindy up and we, we teach a lot of invasion games and maybe that's lack of knowledge of the other, other game categories but really invasion games are the most tactically complex activities that involve the most um, decision making and the most skills so it's, it's quite interesting that, that this is our preference of, of what, what we teach to, to our students. So um, it, I think where we're looking at those four pedagogical principles now, I think when we're teaching invasion games, those four pedagogical principles really help us to make invasion games relevant and developmentally appropriate for, for our students. So, so what David's about to show you um, is, is so important in order to try and create um, learning activities that are relevant for, for our students. Yeah, you're right, and as we will see, uh, invasion games are the most <coughs> complex games, uh, tactically speaking. So if we understand how it works, the pedagogical principles and the, and the model in general, in invasion games, we we will have a very good understanding of the model. So let's see. The first pedagogical principle is sampling, and is just use different examples of the same category. Uh, so with this uh, in this uh, uh, invasion games, so the students can find 
and understand different tactical problem solutions. So they face different sports or different games and with, with the same tactical problems, but they can see uh, that they are similar and uh, we will see they can transfer these solutions. So in this, let's see for a while, in, in a minute, this video, and let's try to find which problem the, the players are facing, uh, both in offense and in defense. So as we see, the, they are trying to, to, they fight for the ball, they, when they get the ball, they go to the other uh, side of the, of the field, of the pitch, and uh, of course the, the, the other team try to do the opposite, exactly the opposite. So, and the final goal of course is to get the ball into the, into the basket. So, what are the main tactical problems? And these are very, very important for us, for physical education teachers, to understand what are the main tactical problems, because we need to focus on tactical problems during our lessons, so we can set uh, our activities based on these tactical problems. This way, uh, our teaching will be more um, meaningful, because uh, at the end, games are is all about problems, to solve problems. So when, I, when I have to to go uh, to the basket and I have two defenders and I have to decide if to pass the ball to, uh, to the mate or dribbling or, or shot to the basket, that's a problem. And we need to, to, firstly, we need to understand that I'm in a different problem, in a specific problem, and then I have to try to decide which skill or tool I have to use to, to solve this problem. So, in in offense, uh, the first tactical problem we face is keeping the possession. If we don't have the ball, we cannot score. So once I keep the possession, I have the ball, I, can I have to try to progress to the goal in a space and also to, to be myself, my team, uh, closer to, to get the, the goal or the, or the point. And the last tactical problem is scoring. So once I have uh, the chance to score, I have to score, but that's the final goal. These tactical problems in offense have the, um, uh, in the mirror in defense. If I have to try to keep the possession, the main problem of our defenses are to win the ball, because if not, they, don't, they cannot score. This is differently than when we are playing a net sport, that the ball came to me, so I have to, my problem is not to fail the point. Here I have to get the ball, if not I cannot score, so I cannot win the game. So, I need, I try to, uh, I have to try to win the ball, uh, if I cannot get it, I have to defend space, if I cannot prevent the other team to go uh, close to my goal, I have to defend the goal, so try to, to prevent you not to get point in my, um, for them. These are the main tactical problems. Uh, some authors that, uh, as uh, Mitchell, Oslin and Griffin, um, put another tactical problems in invasion game which are related to starting and restarting play. Because uh, it's very important in invasion games how I play, what I have to do both in offense and defense when I have when I begin the game from the sideline or at line or at the fault or penalty. So most of the scores are made uh, from starting and restarting. I guess as well, uh, David, when, when I was trying to use TGFU in my practice first, um, I really used the tactical problems as the focus of my lesson. So um, that's, that's how I started. I said to the kids, look, this lesson is focused on keeping possession. So the activity for today's lesson is you are going to solve how to keep that possession. With yeah. TGF, you were really setting up that problem-based learning, giving the kids a tactical focus and also giving them a problem to solve 
and that's how it starts to become more students uh, student centered. So those tactical problems there would be my my unit of work. You know, how are we going to progress to the goal today? All right, these are my learning activities that are going to help you solve that problem. So that that's a really important slide for me. Yeah, I think this is the the, the main the main uh, information uh, if you want to to do your your lessons because the, the start point is the tactical problem. Then I have to do I can I can do a general uh, view of the problem with a general uh, general uh, game, or I can go uh, more specifically and using different skills to solve that problem. For example, I can progress to the goal. Um, Using mainly passing, but I can I have I can use also dribbling, so I can do different activities to focus. But uh, we will get to that, and when I when we will talk about acceleration, the other tactical problem um, principle. So uh, simply, we know so what this is. Yeah, David, I'm just going to jump in real quick and. Um, and just say, yeah, I, I really enjoy that slide as well, and I think it's great for that backwards lesson planning, making sure that that's the focus, and then how are you going to reach that focus. So definitely like it, and I just want to say thanks to our viewers who um, who are on that Google Doc and have added uh, quite a few invasion games, uh, really kind of worldwide games too, so not specific to any country, but you know they've already added quite a few things there from Ultimate Frisbee to basketball, capture the flag, football, handball, Quidditch. <laughs> so, I like it. Yeah, some speedball, uh, ultimate style games, rugby, uh, sabaki ball, netball, basketball, hockey, soccer, AFL, and, and and basketball. So, again, just some, just some pretty cool things there. And, and thanks everyone for jumping on that. Um, and we can always put links on there too. So if you're not sure what something is, um, then people can just have easy access to it. So thanks for adding that in. Yeah, and just on Tozzle as well, um, David and Matt, um, we've got some really good questions. So how do you teach tactical issues to younger students, 12 to 13 year olds? That's from uh, Narcisco. Um, and I guess that this is where these sampling principles um, are coming in, oh sorry, these pedagogical principles are coming in. So. For us, you'll look at modification next through representation and through exaggeration, and they are the two that I really use to, to modify, modify my games and reduce the tactical complexity of the sport. So um, Narcisco, David will, will get there. And another question is looking at um, if you've got limited time to teach TGFU, so I might reply to that one on Tozzle, but good job, David. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, I will. I would like to, to answer very quickly that what, what do you have to do if you don't have time enough? Well, let's play. <laughs> let's play from the beginning because it's not only the, probably uh, that, uh, that, uh, that works better, it's also what your students want to do. So the motivation will be much, much better uh, or higher. So you will have uh, much more better results. So sampling, what is for? We know that uh, we have seen that is it uh, to use different games within the same category, but what is the pedagogical purpose of this? Well, the main uh, purpose is to transfer, transfer from one sport to another. So I can teach um, the main elements, and you can apply them. If I teach you in, in basketball or in, in a general general invasion games, you can try to transfer or you can transfer it to, to hockey or, or soccer. So another main thing is to experience through categories. So people, students can have um, experiences in all kind of games. Uh, this way you will have to more Mm, options to choose during your sport life because you will know a lot of things from different categories. You are not concentrated only one or two specific sports. And this saves time. In which way? So if, for example, in primary education, and we will come to la this later, if I don't have to, in, I want to, to teach uh, four sports, but I have to use. Uh, our, the view of teaching for understanding is to choose sport from different categories and 
uh, teach them in a way that uh, they, our students have a base for a lot of sports. So I can use 20 lessons teaching invasion games and these 20 lessons will serve students to have a, a nice base for different sports probably in the uh, upper grades. And how do you accomplish transfer in, uh, in PA curriculum? Well, you can use different categories, as I, as I said. And in primary education, you can, say, you can use generic blocks or generic games. My, my advice is not to use specific sports in primary education. And I, when, I, when I say primary education, in Spain, primary education is from first to sixth grade. So 12 years old. Uh, my advice uh, or our advice is not to, to use um, basketball or volleyball. And if you use it, you have to reduce and make it simple. But uh, it's a nice advice to use generic blocks. So for example, games uh, or different games in the same block. So you can change from some kind of soccer and some kind, I, when I say some kind is very simplified or modified uh, <clears throat> form of the game. So you are not, uh, you don't have to go very deep into, into rules, very deep into techniques. No, you have to go to the main fundamentals of the invasion games. When you go to secondary education from 13, 14, uh, you will uh, have to go to specific sports and you have to, to use also a good sample of them. And a different advice, but I really like this kind of sports. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense in English. <laughs> it's all round games. So yeah, generic, um, generic games, yeah, I, and that answers Luan's question there as well and a few questions on Tozzle. So those games that combine different um, invasion games, so Gaelic football is combining a bit of um, soccer and um, uh, what do they do, they throw a match in uh, Gaelic football too, so soccer, netball, yeah. Yeah, the speedball probably is more well known in, 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 in the States, is kind of the simplification of Gaelic football. I, I, really, feel, I really think it's a really nice uh, view to, to watch how Gaelic football uh, combine soccer, uh, basketball, rugby, it's really nice. So you have to, to use your foot, your dribbling with your hands and a lot of things. You can throw with your hands like in Hamilton and also to kick the ball is really nice. So if you are able to play Gaelic football, you will have a very good base for a lot of uh, different sports. So let's watch this in invasion games. Um, this is uh, some of my students in my faculty uh, were at the beginning of the, of the blocks of invasion games. I use multiple games, multiple games, and we change from one to another very quickly. So they can, at the end of the lesson, they had to discuss um, what kind of similarities they found in the games, and let's try to do the same. So, uh, yes, can you identify similar tactical problems and their solutions? Let's see bigger videos. For example, in the server, very, very short uh, clips. As we see, they it's pass the ball, they're getting free, then try to get the score. Just remember that this is on that Google Doc as well. Um, it's activity three or question number three. So um, if you have some responses or thoughts, um, you can always add them right on that document as we go. Okay, let's see the other game, mini game. I play in the same session. They just play five minutes and change the game and also change the opponent. This is ultimate frisbee. Okay, they are not very skilled, but they, they play. This is shock ball. Uh, to get a point, you have to, 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 
to hit this, but also have to bounce on the floor. That's is not a goal. So we see a goal at the final of the clip. So for people the, who doesn't know the, this game. Okay, that's the point. Okay, it's a different different kind of invasion games. Very interesting. Uh, yeah. So, do we have any answer about uh, the similarities in different games? There's one of them being typed in as of right now. Yeah, it's a bit slow. Yeah, good. We're keeping possession. Yeah. Yeah, they mainly. To me, it's, to me, it's the marking on defense. You know, who, who are you going to be marking? Um, you know, for most of them, you're going to be marking a person. Um, sometimes it could be space. Um, you know, depending on which one you you are teaching. But uh, we've got creating space, setting yes. up an attack. Exactly. We're starting to get into some de defensive thoughts as well. Okay, it's all, pro, all mainly the same game, but with different tools. Here you're using your feet. Here you're using your hands, and you cannot dribble him. And here is more like the same. So, but the tactical problem they are facing are exactly the same. Uh, probably in chat ball is different because you have to face when to to to, to shot to the target, but also to prevent that the, the bounce go to the floor. So there's kind of specific things, but the main problems are the same. And how transfer is achieved? Well, through experience and knowledge. Experience is to actually play different games. And knowledge is to reflect and talk about that. And how can you do it in, in, your, in your lessons? Well, you can design games focusing the same tactical problem uh, with different sports. For example, if one of the problems I have to, I want to, to face and to get this transfer is to keep the ball. I can do uh, the same game using hockey sticks, soccer, frisbee, basketball, but at the end you have to, to get uh, 10 passes for to get one point. So it's the same tactical problem and at the end, the students have to realize that they are using different skills, but they are really addressing the same tactical problem. Okay. Another strategy is to verbalize it, to talk about that, and what uh, before and after the practice. We are not talking not only about what we are doing. We talk also about what our student watch on TV. So. Uh, for example, at the end of this, this lesson, we can talk about with our students, okay, would you watch this match, uh, the match uh, today, or the Super Bowl uh, tonight? So please pay attention and let's see if you are doing something today with uh, your soccer ball, and that is the same in the, in the Super Bowl, in American football or in basketball, okay? So we, it's a very good idea to transfer uh, the knowledge to make uh, students to, to watch sports and trying to connect to their own experience and make this transfer going also to, to knowledge, not, not only to practice. Okay, uh, the second um, pedagogical principle is modification representation. Um, basically, it's, to, it's simplification. In fact, in some uh, approaches, they call uh, di directly simplification, which is to, to minimize the structural elements, but to keep the same tactical structure of the game. Uh, for example, if we see in, the, in these pictures, it's the same sport, it's basketball, but this is mini basket. Uh, I don't know how to say in English. Mini basket, do you say? Yeah, mini basketball. Yep. Okay. Or lower hoops, yeah. yeah. What? Or you uh, smaller size basketball? Is that it? Is that it as well? 
Yeah, but this is not only uh, a small hoops, it's also uh, uh, we reduce the number of players, we reduce okay. also the ball and the space. So at the end it's, it's mini basket, isn't it? Yep. Uh, so this activity, how do you representation in your invasion game lessons? Uh, uh, do teachers use the, the format game? Basketball fight against five with very high basketball. Do we use um, another kind of sports in the in the same form that they are played outside of the school, or they do they use uh, mini games? Do we have any answer? Um, I'm going to give you an answer. So in terms of what simplified versions I use, I use a lot of um, piggy in the middle. <laughs> um, that's you know, reducing the number of players um, and getting the students to, uh, you know, reducing the complexity that way. Um, but still trying to represent the, the aim of um, whether it's soccer or whatever I'm teaching, uh, but uh, and then building them up to um, 3v2s or, or something like that. Okay. I guess you're trying to show the overload principle in um, in those invasion game sports. I'll just jump and have a look at the, um, the Google Hangout, the document. <clears throat> People have said 3 plus uh, v, 3v3 plus a neutral on a fence to keep possession. Yeah, so you've got that roving player so that you've always got that overlap. That's, um, that's a good way. And um, easily transition to the directional game, um, which I think is important because a lot of the time with those P in the middle game, games, you, you don't have an end point like you would do in basketball or in soccer. So, um, so yeah, those 3v3s are, are really good. And I think... Um, the research shows that by reducing the number of players is one of the best ways to to represent the game at an yeah. appropriate developmental level. And I agree. Uh, one of the main books uh, about this is the in the tactical game model from Michael Osley and Griffin. The main uh, element to to go from one level to another to progress in levels is to increase the number of players. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, and what is for? Well, is to to let to allow the children to play, to actual play. And what is play? Play is to to think about, uh, to think when when you are playing, to to get a, a good participation, etc. So uh, is to create uh, a game. Uh, accordingly to the size, age, and ability of the children. So, if you, if what's the point of the game uh, to have uh, 100 meters to the goal? If I'm a, a six years old, when I get there, I'm so tired I cannot shot to the score, and probably I get there once in a, in in the whole match. So, what's the point? I need. I need to to get into the into the score very quickly and to shot a lot of times, and I need uh, if my I'm not very skilled, I cannot have a lot of stimulus around me because this way I cannot think clearly. Uh, I will not get the ball, but also if when I get the ball, if I have five or six different options to of my mates and another seven opponents, it's very difficult to think clearly, but instead of this, if I'm playing a three against three, the, the number of options, tactical options, are um, achievable. Uh, I don't know if that's English. <laughs> no, no, it makes sense, and um, you just, you, I think you've just got to make sure that you, you're meeting that level for the students to, to feel that they're um, having success in the games too. There's nothing yeah. worse than them playing a game and always losing or not actually achieving the, the aim of your lessons. So modification by representation really helps the students to 
to achieve that outcome and understand about, about the game and to experience success in your lesson. Whereas I think if we're, we're focused maybe just on, on the skills, a lot of the students aren't, aren't going to experience that success because they're hard to do. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, uh, what Moda uh, proposes is to decrease physical requirements uh, to, as, uh, as we said, uh, tactical complexity in, to enhance learning and physical training. So, to make it uh, developmentally appropriate. So, if we and have... Yeah. Sorry, David. I'm just going to jump in there and say it. When, when we're talking about enhancing learning, the great thing with, with TGFU is that that um, concept of learning really expands. It's expanding beyond that physical domain. It's looking at the cognitive domain. It's looking at the affective domain. So through, through games, we're now trying to bring in learning to, to those students that haven't always experienced maximum success in, in our lessons. Yeah. Uh, well, in, in terms of intensity and participation, that's very important because uh, if we don't have a, a nice intensity in our lessons, in our games, and they don't participate, at the end they don't learn. So I will, we will talk about that later. And motivation, think, of course. I just want to add that part. Like that's to me, has been the biggest success as I begin to kick off TGFU, just the fact that so many students are engaged. So many students are engaged in high levels of of movement and activity. And when they're moving like that, when they get the ball so much, they definitely learn a whole lot more. And you know, their um, their self confidence goes through the roof. And then everybody, you know, wants to be involved and wants to continue to be involved. And I think that's been one of the biggest successes, really, of our program um, in three years. You know, I've been using TGFU. Yeah, yeah, and you're highlighting that success rather than the failure. You know, if you're standing in lines practicing a chest pass or practicing your kick, the spotlight's on you, and if you can't do it, that's, that's really tough for, well, it's tough for me, let alone for, for a kid. So um, it, it's great for them to be experiencing the game and, you know, to be, to be learning through the game where, where the spotlight isn't on them. Okay. So let's go to the... Uh, next activity, uh, how to modify invasion games to shoot children and enhance learning. Uh, let's watch this uh, video, the soccer, female soccer, and let's see in the next game, mini game, if we are facing this, the same tactical problems but adapted to, to children. Let's try to find similarities it's uh, United States against Mexico. Go. And let's see the mini game. Again, girls doing exactly the same, but they just have to run 20 meters and get the score. They have to run, get in free, find a nice chance to, to shot. The size of the field is according to the physical uh, ability, uh, the number of players they can manage to, to play with uh, two or three or uh, other other players. This pretty much. What I'm game. picking up from that game is that through both games, the, the large version and the small version, they're still using that space. They're still taking the ball out wide. You can see it in the, the big version and in that small version. So the, the tactical concepts are still there. Yeah, exactly. And that's that's the point to to keep the 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 fundamental uh, the, the chance of the game to keep it, but uh, to their ability. Uh, so how to modify invasion games to treat children features and enhance learning? So we have uh, some answers like smaller space, less players, 
size of the origin board, is exactly that. Number of players, space, goals, balls, implements, and as we said, probably in invasion games, the main modification is number of players, by far. So what is the saturation? So if, if, if uh, representation is to reduce the characteristics of the games, saturation is to exaggerate some parts, tactically speaking. So some secondary rules are modified to focus the game in a specific tactical problem and to get students to perform these actions. So I modify the game so my students have to, to address a specific tactical problem um, uh, more times. So if I play the whole game, I'm facing all the tactical problems. But probably that they are not going to, to, to try to score a lot of times. If I want to, to try to get into, the, into the, these tactical problems, I can modify, design a game which uh, instead of one or two times in five minutes, they shot to the goal 20 times. So they have more learning there. So modification by saturation seek to emphasize particular information, making it clear to the students how to achieve a certain action. And what is for? What is it for? Well, when I reduce the game, Tactically, is also very complex. So I can exaggerate or modify some rules to make it more simple. So I can decrease tactical, technical, and rules uh, complexity so they can think. If they are playing, but they are not thinking about what they have to do, they are not really playing as, as we want they to play. So, uh, and this way we can work more efficiently in specific tactical problems. So how do you use saturation in your lessons? Do you change rules? Do you, uh, have, uh, what do you do as a teacher? So I don't know. Well, these are some of the answers. We've got a couple kind of getting typed in there as of right now. Spacing out and players. We had a few questions on, on Tozzle, which we were asking about the same thing. You know, how do you ensure that um, the less able students are, are engaged in your lesson? Um, and I think exaggeration is a really good way of engaging them. And so through differentiation and modification, you, you can set learning constraints on different groups. So if, if you have one group that isn't experiencing success, you might be able to change the space to give them more space to make it easier to move. Or you might change one group's goals to make it smaller or, you know, change the shape of the, the field so that they they do experience um, some success. So I think the exaggeration and modification can really help individualize and personalize that learning experience. So yeah. um, what are they writing up there? Three I, passes before you can shoot for a goal? Just just talking about keeping everyone involved uh, as well. Um, you know, I don't always let my students choose their partners, but when I do a yeah. lot of TGFU activities and you know the small sided games that kind of come with them and, and and the practice in those situations, sometimes having them be with their partners and their friends, um, yeah. sometimes that can be the biggest motivator. Uh, um, you know, when you choose partners for someone else, uh, work with them. Sometimes they have a difficult time, but if they're if they're involved with their friends and sometimes their friends are at the same skill level and you know some are a little higher skilled but then they just begin to help each other out as well um, and they they begin to feel comfortable in the early two to three lessons um, you know as we as we're modifying games and um, you know as we're focused on the concepts and um, and to me that can just be some of the biggest successes and then they get excited about it and you know they've learned and they've practiced and they've challenged themselves and um, 
I found that is to be one of the biggest motivators, and it really works. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think that's um, you know um, they're just looking at some in inclusion strategies, and you want them to feel confident in in their learning environment. So yeah, I definitely think that's the way forward. Just picking up on some of the modifications, I think um, when I was beginning to trial um, trial this, and then the more I read. Some of the modifications that I was making um, weren't probably um, helpful, or they they weren't actually linked to the the tactical um, considerations within that game. So, so for example, you know, I used to say, "Oh, now you can't use a shoulder pass in netball." When we were looking at possession and looking at you know attacking the goal, and I really had to start thinking, "Well, well, why am I saying that?" Because they were having too much success with a shoulder pass because it was taking the ball over everybody's head. So I think on the reverse here we have to have a look at what ex what modifications we are making at the extent of losing that uh, those tactical considerations within the, the actual game. So sorry, going off on a tangent there. There's some good stuff being written on um, Google Docs there. Yeah. <clears throat> So uh, the answers in Google Docs is more or less the same. We are talking about to limit in the space, number of players, to try to facilitate the appearance of this behavior. Um, so one of the of the concept is the tactical problem emerge from the goal of the game. So if you modify the goal of the game, you are facing a tactical problem. If the goal of the game is to to get five passes in a row, you will face in keeping the ball. Tactical problem. If the uh, if the goal of the game is that the three of the players, all of them, get a score, they are facing the scoring tactical problem. But also, how to include everybody trying to score. So it's very. It's this is an inclusion strategy also, for example. So let's see uh, some samples of modifications. For example, in the, in the next video, we, we will see a, um, a game which, are in, in, this, uh, in this lesson, uh, I was trying to, to address these tactical problems, finding spaces close to the basket and the scoring right from behind. Uh, it's a three against three modified basketball by representation. So this the basketball, but it's only in a reduced form. And in this case, the students are low skilled in basketball. In just one of them is middle skilled. Let's let's see what's what happened. They are very low skilled in in, in dribbling. So. And he's shooting to the basketball. When they are bouncing, they look at the ball, so they are not looking at the other players. And this this player is uh, is not bad. It's good. It's tried is is able to to score. So it. When he gets the, the, the score, is just by himself. Okay, again, he's playing alone. So we we will see that we are trying to, to fix all these behaviors. It's very difficult to, to see a good pass, a good uh, break. They move, but they don't find spaces. Okay, enough. Uh, let's see the. So, what kind of modification we can do? Is, for example, no bouncing, no bouncing. So they have to pass. Call defense, as I saw in uh, one of uh, our answers in uh, Google Docs. Call defense, and we are not just trying to get the score. But we are, it's, as they are very bad shooting the, the ball, they are not getting the score. But we will get three points if they get the basketball, the basket. But if they hit the basket, just hit it, 
they get one point. Let's see what happened. Let's try to see they are thinking tactically, and they move more tactically. So you call defense. If they are very close, they have to sit down. Okay, now begin to pass and move and get more, more, more chances to, to get a, a nice option to score. Okay, they are not concentrated in, uh, in bouncing, in dribbling, so they are more con concentrated in fine space. Oh, okay, again. And now the good player make the other players play. Okay, this is a nice play, nice pass, really, really nice play. So, it's a better game, and they are really facing the tactical problem that I wished. Okay, another, another problem, another game. In this case, I want to, to, to address uh, the scoring problem. So, I want them to practice when and how to shot to the goal. Again, they are very low skilled in football, in soccer, so at the end they, they will shot very, very few times and not really good. It's not a bad play, it was good. This was a very good play. What can we do if we want they to play to face more times and get it uh, easier? Well, uh, one of the solutions is to to do uh, more more targets. So here they have four goals. They can start the game from the uh, from the middle of the field. So they have a lot of opportunities to find a goal to shot. So it's much easier tactically, and they are thinking all the time in shooting. Okay, yes, they don't get a goal, but they were thinking and trying to do it. And trying to create space and move into a position so that they're available to score too. This is a great game. I've used this quite a lot. It's, um, it really um, exaggerates those those tactics that you want them to to use. Yeah. Could you make the goals bigger as well, David? Yeah, certainly. If you, you this way, they will have a much easier target to get, so they will shoot more times. Yeah. So for example, is this the same the same idea with the four goals where they're facing different sides, so they have to move uh, from all around the pitch, the field. So here, okay. Both teams can score in the four goals. Okay, yeah, good team. example. Go. So very different options. For example, in this in this case, they facing right away the goal and get the goal. So, and they're all the time facing the same tactical problem. This scoring is very saturated, so it's a nice modified game. Yeah, and likewise David, um, I had kids doing similar um, activity and they weren't skillful with their soccer skills, so they just started picking it up and throwing it and made it into a netball game, um, which is the same, you know, you're reducing the tactical complexity by changing the skill set that they require. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, David, we've got probably just a couple minutes to go, so um, I'm going to have to jump over to another presentation here soon. So mm -hmm. if we kind of want to put the finishing touches on it, and then uh, we'll say a quick goodbye. Okay, so I just go very quickly to all my slides so you can see uh, later. This is some picks for to modify rules, space, and targets. Go. Um, the, the last tactical complexity 
pedagogical principle is more simple is to go from uh, simple to more complex games, from target games to invasion. And very important question, how do we know if we get a good game going? So we can evaluate participation, engagement, enjoyment. If we don't have a good game, we go to representation to simplify the game. If we go, if our students don't address the tactical problem, we go on, we go to exaggeration. And the, the, we want today to think tactically and to that technique doesn't limit the shoe making. And to learn, then we use both uh, pedagogical principles at the same time. So what happened is too complex. We reduce the number of players, reduce the increase in the space. If very complex technically, rest, reduce or modify the rules, adjust equipment, and if address to address the tactical problem, let's go to modify the goal or the scoring system. This is more complex concept, is how the pedagogical principle go into the uh, TGF wheel, which is more advanced knowledge, but uh, I'm pretty sure you will you find the answers in another presentation. And that's pretty much the same. These are very nice uh, websites where we have a uh, lot of materials. You can find very nice ideas uh, related to teaching games for understanding and other uh, tactical approaches. So we uh, advise you to, to join us and to find uh, this information. And this is all. Thank you very much. Gracias. Well, thank you very much, David, for uh, being a part of this. And thank you, Kelly, for for joining us as well, and, and everyone who participated in the TASL. I know there were some questions in there, and people were having their own little mini side, uh, side conversations, which was perfect, and that's exactly what we were looking for. Um, Kelly, I see you're unmuted, and I could tell you wanted to say a little something. No, no, I just wanted to say, same. I thought that you were still in your other presentation. I just wanted to say a huge thank you to, to David for, for doing that um, and on behalf of the TJFU SIG. Um, yeah, I, I learned heaps and um, I, thought, um, I thought it was presented really well, David, so thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Matt, again, for, for this uh, work you're doing. You're really doing good work and keep doing it. Thank you very much. Let's uh, try to do the Spanish next next time. <laughs> yes, I will work on that. So, uh, yeah, thank thank you both. We appreciate it. And the Phys Ed Summit couldn't happen without people like you uh, offering to step up and present and um, you know sharing knowledge and expertise. And um, it's just very much appreciated. And for those of you that are watching, don't forget you can fill out our feedback. Uh, form um, that can give you a certificate of completion too, um, just to say that you're here and um, that would get emailed to you when you fill out that feedback form. So I will post that in the TASL um, and you could also find it on the Phys Ed Agogi website under Phys Ed Summit. So um, take a look at that and just wanted to say thank you Kelly, thank you David and um, right, everyone you. enjoy the rest of the Phys Ed Summit. Okay, bye. Bye.